never forget um, holding my almost little lifeless child. I was numb, and so I didn't feel or hear or see anything um, besides my tunnel vision, which was seeing her in a bed, people working around her, putting tubes here, needles there. I'll never forget just the simple, he just touched my shoulder, I looked around, and then he introduced himself and said that he was a volunteer at the hospital and that um, he was gonna be my person. He got me water, he held my hand, he went over and talked to the physician, the nurses, asked what was going on, came back to me and explained it in you know ways that I understood. That was the single worst day of my entire life. And for that one hour that I had an interaction with this perfect stranger, he was a perfect stranger to me. Cameron walks in, he goes, my man Bryce, are you still watching Wally? So he just knew who he was and just back, right back where they left off like six months ago. Cameron dealt with Bryce and we were secondary. So to him, he was the first person he talked to when he came into the room, even though he could not respond back in any way. You know, you can't assume that just because you're nonverbal, you don't, they have no clue as to what's going on. And I would, you know, try to pass along to people, like if you go in there and talk to this kid, he can't say anything to you, but he understands everything you're saying. His surgery was such a big event in all of our lives, and for him to treat it like it was just as a big of a deal to him as it was to us, it really said a lot about who he is and who, what Children's does, I think. When I meet patients and their families, my first thought is the patient's the most important thing, um, and you would just want to make their experience just as easy as possible. She really almost had no face. She had no nose. She had tremendous clefts of her eyelids so that you really couldn't see much in the way of her eyes. And her jaws were so far back that it just didn't look like she had a lower face. When I first met the family, I walked into the room and um, thought, wow, we have a lot of barriers here. They speak a different language. Just so many things that they needed. She's Saudi and, uh, and her family's quite conservative. It took a lot of work and a little bit of trust building to get you know, the family on board with us, and Emily really took some ownership and has gotten a special friendship going with the family. It, it was finding something in common uh, that we had to start the beginning and, and to learn trust. When Emily talks about them, she talks about them as a family. She doesn't talk about their disease or their diagnosis. I think they've made a really great connection and uh, to the point where I think Rafif's brother has Emily on speed dial. You can just see the change in both in Rafif and in her family. She's much more outgoing and you know the family is so much more comfortable with letting her be out in public and you know I think it's really changing their lives. Knowing that she's had such a great experience here is very fulfilling um, and to know that you make a difference so each individual that's here that interacts with a family can make a difference and to know that um, what I did and the connections that I have with this family I won't ever forget and I don't think that they will. It was a Friday evening, I got a page, father-daughter dance in 10 minutes in such and such a room, you know, and it was odd, I'd never gotten a page like that before. The first thing she said to me is, you are going to love this patient, she is wearing a purple frilly dress, she has a cupcake necklace on, and she's wearing a corsage with a purple butterfly on it. And I was like, oh, you have me intrigued. When I saw her, she just looked so sad, and I just remember thinking, this is like a ruined night, like this six-year-old is going to remember that she didn't get to do this, and, and that made me really sad. The wheels were kind of already turning in my mind, like, what can we do to salvage this night? Like, what if we gave this girl her father-daughter dance just in the hospital? I have never seen people, like, so excited and start working right away. There were a bunch of nurses and medics working with me. We made snowflakes and cut out all kinds of decorations. We were singing, we were dancing, she got up all the popsicles she wanted. It was really such a special night. I ducked my head in and the, here's uh, Dr. Bria dancing with this sweet little girl dressed in a party dress with the biggest grin on her face. She was just in seventh heaven. I think we all left the ER that night just thinking that, you know, things were right with the world. It may have been fleeting, but it was, it was very important. 
the medical care is just a small portion of it. It's very important to make a connection with the family because the families know their children the best. When you make that connection with a person's child, you automatically make that connection with that family. And that takes away the white coat, it takes away, you know, the stethoscope, and it, it really breaks it down that we're just two people and we're just trying to kind of figure this situation out together. It's just meeting you where you are and then helping you on the journey. It's not going above and beyond. It's, it's why we enjoy coming to work. It's just little tiny things that go on throughout the hospital that make the biggest difference in your visit. Sometimes you need a person in your corner. It doesn't matter if you don't know them. They can be a stranger, but you need a person. And that person is compassionate and they're caring. Um, they're understanding, they're patient, um, and they're just calm. And they're your strength. We all need a person. I just like knowing that I've made a difference and helped somebody. And I feel like this job allows you to give something every single day. Every single day.